In this problem, we are graphing another trig function. In this case, it's a cosine, and there's a lot of other stuff going on. Instead of just the cosine of x, something's multiplied by the x. So we've got the cosine of 2x. Then we've got a number, in fact, a negative number multiplied by the cosine function. And then we've got another number subtracted at the end of all that. So we need to graph this and figure out uh, what this is going to look like. Here, I've got the uh, cosine function here. This is just y equals the cosine of x. And the cosine and the sine are what we call periodic functions. They repeat each other, so it's the same pattern. And if we look at one full period, like from 0 to 2 pi, the cosine function starts at 1. Over here, at pi over 2, it's down to 0. Then we reach pi, where it's at negative 1. Then at 3 pi over 2, it's back up to 0. And finally, at 2 pi, it's back to where it started. So that's one period of the function. These points, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, those are really important points because it's where the function is at its maximum, its minimum, and where it's at at 0. So what I want to do when I choose points to plot for this function, I want to make sure this value here uh, can be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to make my chart for x and y values, except I'm going to add another column. So I'm going to have x values and 2x. This is just a way to help me organize in my head what I need to plug in for x. I want 2x to be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So how do I get x values if this is what 2x is? Well, it's just half of that. So half of 0 is still 0. Half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. Half of pi is pi over 2. Half of 3 pi over 2 is 3 pi over 4. And half of 2 pi is pi. So this means when I plug in these values for x, 2x is going to be these values, and that's what I have to take the cosine of. And that's handy, because I know the cosines of these values. So let's let's start uh, figuring out our y values then. If I put in 0, it's still 0 when I multiply it by 2. The cosine of 0 is 1. And then I multiply that by negative 5 halves. So I'm going to get negative 5 halves times 1, and then minus 1. So that's a minus another 2 halves. So I'm going to get negative 7 halves here. Let's try uh, putting in pi over 4. We multiply by 2, we get pi over 2. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So five, negative 5 halves times 0 is just 0. So this is negative 1. And now we can put in pi over 2. Multiply that by 2, we get pi. The cosine of pi is negative 1. So this is going to be negative 5 halves times a negative 1, and then minus 1. So negative 5 halves times a negative 1 is a positive 5 halves. So 5 halves minus 2 halves is a positive 3 halves. All right, let's try 3 pi over 4. That gives us 3 pi over 2 when we multiply it by the 2. The, uh, the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. So that's also going to be negative 1. And 2 pi, we should get the same value we started with on 0. But let's just test that. So we put in pi, we get the 2 pi. The cosine of 2 pi is 1 times negative 5 halves minus 1. That's going to get us to the negative 7 halves. All right, we've got our x and our y values. Let's go ahead and plot them. So let me choose a different color here. So my first point is 0 and negative 7 halves. So 7 halves is 3 and a half. So right here. And then we've got at pi over 4, which is right here between 0 and pi over 2, we up to negative 1. And, and at pi over 2, we're at positive 3 halves. So pi over 2, 1 and a half right there. Then we head back down again. That's our, that's our high point. Um, so at 3 pi over 4, which is going to be right here, we are at negative 1. So back down to negative 1. And then at pi, we are down to negative 7 halves again. So there we go. If we sketch that in, we've got that. And then we would keep 
keep on going to the left and right in a similar way. So that is how to graph uh, this cosine function when you've got something multiplied by the x and other things going on.